Okay, you're looking at the four flight map screen. Over on the right, we have our departure airport, which is Toronto. Bottom left is our final destination airport, which will be somewhere in Los Angeles. Over on the right, you'll see a little green dot. That represents us. It's a Mooney M20J. We'll be flying VFR conditions. It's not going to be a direct flight. We're going to stop anywhere that we find interesting. On the top, you'll see a profile view. All those pretty colors represent the various airspace we will be traveling through during our trip. This next step is extremely tedious, but it's extremely important for safety reasons as well as confidence. I'm going to be identifying the maximum elevation figure in every quadrant that our planned route intersects. With that information, I'll be able to choose the correct cruising altitude. In our case, it's going to be 10,500. 10,500 prevents us from flying into a mountain peak or a man-made obstacle, which would really screw the trip up. As we fly more westward, you can clearly see the colors on the chart are going from light to dark. That's something that we want to pay close attention to because that indicates that the terrain is increasing in elevation. So let's focus in on those two hot spots. One in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the other one is going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona. I've zoomed into the New Mexico area and circled all the maximum elevation figures that are in our routes. The 10,400 and the 11,000 maximum elevation figures were something that I paid close attention to and there was absolutely no conflict so I felt confident proceeding more westward over to Flagstaff. Flagstaff represents the Mount Everest of this entire journey from the east to the west. It happens to have the highest maximum elevation figure along our planned route of, or is it route? I don't know if the Americans say route and we say route or vice versa. Back to where, what I was saying of 13,000 feet. So I'm going to land there, probably spend a few days here, grab some time lapses at night, grab some food and take in the local scenery, etc. So let's take a look at this through Airport 3D. Okay, I'm not really too sure why I'm at 98,000 feet, but these things do happen with four flights sometimes. Maybe they thought we were a U-2? Nah, even the U-2, I believe it capped out at 70,000 feet. So the graphics, they're, they're not too bad. I mean, you've just got to be careful if you're doing this on your iPad Pro or iPad Air, whatever you're using, that you don't zoom in and out too fast. Otherwise, you're going to get tearing. It's definitely not Microsoft Flight Sim, but it, you know, it's good enough. It does the job and it gives you a real impression of what it looks like. So here we are, we're lined up for runway 21, which is actually the runway we would be landing on when we actually arrive there and land. So that's pretty cool. And this is from the reverse direction. I believe that's opposite of 21 is 03. Back to 21, and here we are, we're landing. Look at this, holy shit. Oh, oh, we came up a bit short there. Okay, so there's one more thing we can do for a 3D review. So let's just say we're gonna set up for a runway 21 landing. So we'll move this uh, line around a little bit and we'll enter a left base for 21. Yeah, just like that, that looks really good. So this isn't an airport 3D now. We're actually going to have a 3D review of us flying our plane along this planned route, which is really cool. So you can literally put yourself in the plane and virtually fly this approach to land at 2-1. So as you can see here, we're going to be turning right and then a left turn for final for 2-1. Here we go. Here comes the right turn and we'll see that huge 13,000 MEF Mount Olympus in front of us. And then there's our left turn to final for 2-1, just as we planned. And isn't that amazing? We have an excellent idea 
It feels like we've actually been there, so we're more confident. So one of the interesting things is the 3D review is not limited to just around airports. You can pick anywhere you want on the map. It's going to place you there. You can virtually fly the area and familiarize yourself with it. For example, we're in Niagara Falls. Oh my God, I hopefully it looks a lot better than that in reality, eh? Wow, does that ever look pathetic? But you can see we're in Niagara Falls. And guess where this is? Florida Keys. One last thing that I like to do for the last layer of safety is I like to go into the profile view. So the profile view will give me information to make sure once again, I do not fly into terrain or into airspace. So on the left, you can see I've chosen a 10,500 cruising altitude. If you look over to the right, the highest point along this route is going to be 9,000 which gives us a clearance of 1,520 feet between our plane and the highest point. So first strike is none. We're going to be okay. Now watch what happens if I were to lower that cruising altitude that we selected down to, say, 7,500. Look on the right. Now we've got a clearance in the negatives of 1,479. We are going to hit a mountain at the 1,337 nautical mile mark. Now, if you watch the green dot, that's our plane. And below the green dot, you can see the mile mark. You see how it just went red? We just hit the top of that mountain. So that is bad. So that is just an incredible, incredible extra layer of safety. In regards to airspace, I don't see any issues. It's a pretty straightforward trip. I'll pick up flight falling as much as possible, especially around Bravo. Um, one interesting area that I definitely had to put into this video is Area 51. It's just north of Las Vegas. Nowhere near where we're flying, but if I do fly over there, I'll be making a video for sure. And here you go. As you can see it, it's ground to unlimited is military ops. So you cannot go in there. It's, it's definitely a no-go. It's all military operations. And if you fly in there, you know what happens. They're going to send out some jets and then they're going to shine some lights at you and you're going to either listen to them or you're not. If you don't listen to them, maybe they'll shoot you down and you'll never be heard from again. But if you look closer to the bottom right, we've got Groom Lake and Groom Lake is not a lake. It's a salt flat and it was used for runways for the Nellis bombing range test site, which was airport Kilo X-ray Tango Alpha. Near the top, you've got bombing and gunnery range. Well, that's interesting. You don't see that on the um, my local area maps. I don't know if they have that in any of Canada. And then we've got four targets there. Tell me you wouldn't want to just one day, just once, just once fly an F-22 and just carpet bomb the shit out of that area just once that would be priceless wouldn't it but let's get back to reality it's not happening so that's area 51 and like i said if i do go anywhere up there i'm going to see if i can find a local pilot who can kind of show me the ropes of the area and i will definitely pumping out a video for that one